good car. Really fast through there. Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt, and this is probably the hottest car of the last year. And earlier this year, a few months ago, I was able to spend quite a bit of seat time on the track with this FL5, but I wasn't able to actually spend enough time to do a full normal video in my normal production stuff. So, thanks to our friends at Russ Darrow Honda in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we're able to now spend a little bit more time with the new Civic Type R and see just how the FL5 stacks up against its main rival, the GR Corolla, with the best and the rest. Let's get into it. And the first thing we have to talk about, and it may be a smaller thing, but it's becoming more and more relevant here as we're entering into December here in Wisconsin, and it's the fact that you can't get heated seats on your Civic Type R. Come on, Honda, what? And the next one is the fact that it's front wheel drive only. Now this is a controversial one. It has never been a problem before that the Type R was front wheel drive only. It has a magical helical LSD up front and somehow Houdini torque steer out of the equation, but there's a new name in the game that's bringing all wheel drive, or at least before it overheats its clutch. Now I've done many videos covering the launch and even some on-track stuff in this FL5, and there are people out there asking for an automatic and all wheel drive. The problem is all wheel drive adds two things, weight and cost, neither of which the Civic Type R can afford. Me personally, I'm perfectly fine with the front wheel drive nature of the Type R. And then we have to talk about the rear seats here. Now the space itself here is fine. I've got knee room at 6'1", I have reasonable headroom even with my melon hats on, and they're actually really comfortable. They are cloth, but they're really comfortable. But you do only get two seat belts, because for whatever reason, the cup holders need their own throne in the center here. There's also no air vents, there's no chargers, and they forgot to make the back seats red. You do get red stitching and red seat belts back here, but at this point I guess I'll be grateful that I have cup holders. But then we're gonna talk about the ride. Now on the track, this thing is unbelievably at home. The damping is near and perfect, it minimizes weight transfer, and it keeps the chassis composed laterally through corners. But on the road, even in comfort mode, it is a little bit stiff. Is it forgivable? Yeah, totally. Do I have to be thorough and mention it though? Yeah, totally. And this one's gonna be a little bit controversial. It's a personal opinion that I have, and I know I'm gonna be ripped to shreds in the comments, but I have to talk about the red. I get it, the red is part of the heritage, and I understand the significance, but it's my channel, it's my video, it's my opinion, and the red is just a hair too much for me. The seats need some contrast, the footwells and the carpets don't need to both be red. Now you throw some black weather techs in here or something and you probably solved it, but then every accent and stitch on the interior, yeah, it's also red. Again, a personal take, just me, maybe you love it, but it is a lot of red up here. Not in the back, but up here. And then we have to talk about price, and most specifically the price hike for this year. It's the same exact car it was last year, but now it's $1,000 more expensive. So instead of starting at just under 44, it starts at just under 45. Now I get it, inflation. But the real problem is that the GR Corolla is still thousands of dollars cheaper. And something else to just be aware of, you're probably still gonna run into dealer markup on the FL5 and probably the GR Corolla as well. But now shifting gears, haha, and talking about the best things about this car, I do wanna talk about this shifter here because it's awesome. Now you can only get a manual, and I know some people are bothered by that, but this is the Lord's manual. I thought it was all hype. No, you get a perfect pedal box, you get perfect shift action, you've got shift lights, you've got the classic metallic type R knob, and you've got auto rev matching, which ends up being, you guessed it, perfect. I mean, the shifter in the GR Corolla is good, but this is greatness. And then let's talk about this honey of an engine. It is the same two liter from last generation, but with some tweaks now to the turbo and the exhaust. And here it's now pumping out 315 horsepower, which is up nine from last gen. Notably, you do get 320 in the Integra Type S, but they have to save something for Acura, right? You also get 310 pound-feet of torque here, which is up 15 from last year. And this makes it then the most powerful Honda to ever grace North America, or at least the US. Plus, it's more than the 300 horsepower you get in the GR Corolla, and you won't have the drivetrain loss from an all-wheel drive setup eating away at your power. The power is smooth, it's torquey, and it even sounds good. This is a great motor. And I'm so glad I can put this on the pro side of the video now, but let's talk about the styling. It looks so much better now. It still is hatch only, but so much cleaner from a design perspective. You still get your red Honda badge up front with your Type R in the grille, and there's honeycomb everywhere on the front fascia. Your wheel arches are flared out and you get a gill behind your front wheels. And you've got a hood scoop extracting heat from the engine, because, you know, you're gonna probably take this on track. Your wheels this year are 19s versus the 20s that they were last year, uh, but you do have a wider track, so you got a larger contact patch. 
And if you were a very specific Type R enthusiast, you get black lug nuts here now. And they're all wrapped in Pilot Sport 4S tires, which is definitely the right choice. And then underneath you have 13.8 inch red Brembo brakes. This and the shifting are two things that stuck out to me most on track. The braking performance was immense and that car was beat on all day that I drove on track. You've also got an awesome rear wing with some scaffolding on the side and you get a red Honda H on the back along with your Type R badge. And of course, who could forget your triple exhaust and exaggerated diffuser. Now me, myself, personally, I always thought I was more of a championship white kind of guy, but now seeing Boost Blue for the first time in person, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And it's 2024, so we have to talk about technology, even in a Civic Type R. Your infotainment system is actually kind of whatever. It's nothing special, and that's forgivable because it is a driver's car. But you do get wireless Apple CarPlay, and to be honest, that's really all that I'm looking for. You also get a digital cluster, which is cool. It doesn't change a lot, but it's cool. But you do get the log R function to track things like temperatures, pressures, and you can also track ratings that the car is giving you on your laps. And not just laps specifically, but points in your lap, so you know where you need to improve as a driver. I mean, that's really cool. I don't even remember seeing anything like that in the AMG performance pages, and those cars are three, four times the money sometimes. Then we're gonna talk trunk, and this is a huge win for the Type R. Get it? Huge. Because the trunk is huge. Yeah, I didn't think it was funny either. Now the Civic Si is sedan only, but the Type R is hatch only, and the Civic hatch is legendarily, I don't know if that's a word, but it's big. It's also got the world's cleverest privacy cover. I mean, the GR Corolla is not touching this thing back here. And I do want to talk about general quality for a second, and I don't usually have this as one of the categories in the videos, but I think it's important to include it here because there is a noticeable difference between this and the rest of the segment. The general interior feel and quality of the Type R is just good. It's worlds better than the WRX, it's miles ahead of the GR Corolla. Honestly, the only one that comes close in my mind is the Elantra N. Now I know I complained about stuff like the red, but honestly this feels the most put together and nicest of anything in the segment, by a noticeable degree. And with that, here's some on-track footage that I captured earlier this year, and I apologize in advance for the camera angles. There was a very specific safety guy who didn't like my mount setup. All right, we are on our outlap in the new Type R. So we're gonna do an outlap, we're gonna cover some of the basics here. And then as we do our hot lap, we'll talk more about the chassis and the balance and some of that stuff. So under the hood is a familiar engine. You've got the two liter turbocharged Earth Dreams four cylinder, but this year it's tuned all the way up to 315 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. So not, not a massive change in terms of power output, but definitely something that you're gonna notice, especially since we spent all morning in the GR Corolla, which only has about 275 horsepower, or 275 pound-feet of torque, rather. So this feels a bit more punchy. It does feel like it also makes torque a little bit lower. You do have to rev that GR Corolla engine out a bit more to get the good stuff. But this thing, this feels good. It's pretty fantastic. Now, from there, power will all go through six speed, manual, three pedal, transmission. You'll love to see it. You come to expect it from the Type R, and it's good here. Now, one of the things that Honda wanted to focus on this year was adding a little bit more refinement, a little bit better shift action, and I think, I think they nailed it. The, the shifter feels good in my hand. The, the clutch and engagement point is really well defined. It's really rewarding throw. It's just, it's a, it's a great transmission, I gotta be honest. The last generation's was good. This one's even better. Now, you also do have a lighter flywheel, so your shifts are a little bit more purposeful, and they do feel like they do shift a little bit more crisply. So, overall, very, very good. Ooh, brakes are good. We're gonna start our hot lap right about here. Now, before we do, I will mention, it's a new or revised helical LSD on the front end here. I mean, this isn't a huge horsepower car, but, oh, the brakes are good. Oh, I could brake way later in this thing. 
Brakes are good, coming into turn one. Bit of a chicane here. They've also revised the adaptive suspension on here. Adjusted rebound rates, things like that. Oh, the brakes are good. This double apex. I hope the camera's staying still. The chassis balance is so good. The grip is so good here. I've got loads of front end. Of course, this is the PS4S tire that you get here. It's not the Cup 2 that you get on the Marizo, but this isn't a limited run car, or at least not a 200 unit limited run car. But this thing is quick. Back on the brakes. Come into this right-hander and through the chicane. The brakes are fantastic. They're a Brembo set. They're specifically designed to be lighter and bring down that unsprung weight of the car. God, the shift action is fantastic. All the gears are exactly where I want them to be. Shifts fall in nice and Oh, nice and steady. You've totally messed up that corner, <laughs> thinking about the transition. But the chassis balance is fantastic. There's no roll. I'm not feeling any torque steer when I get on power. Oh, good car. Really fast through there. Chicane. Good balance here. This car loves to rotate. Maybe not quite as much as that Marizo edition on those Cup 2s. They also took a bunch of weight out of the back end of that Marizo. But this car has a fabulous chassis. Great damper tuning. Shift action is great. Steering is good. No torque steer that I'm really feeling. If you really approach the limit, it is a front wheel drive car. And you will get a touch of understeer, but this sustained right-hander is beautiful composition from the body oh this is a good car oh this is so much fun <laughs> I'm only supposed to have ooh, I'm only supposed to have one hot lap but I think it's okay if I do two because I'm just having such a good time So that is the best in the rest of the new FL5 Civic Type R. And I have to say, as you can see through the course of this video, I still think this is probably the king of hot hatches. And now that it's going into its second model year, it's been out for a year, maybe some of the hype has died down, which means maybe you can actually get one now. And you should, because it is an amazing hot hatch. So thanks again to our friends at Rust Air Honda for letting us have some time with their Boost Blue Type R, and we'll see you in the next one.